Hello, welcome to the Cubage introduction session. I'm Kevin Wang, the maintainer of Cubage project. Today, I will go through the uh, Cubage briefs, including the uh, background motivation, major design consideration architecture, and also uh, community updates, including new six and uh, new features. And then I will quickly go through the uh, use case and the future plan, and hopefully we can have time for the uh, Q&A. So we know that the uh, network is becoming more and more powerful today and more and more uh, people start to uh, build business uh, at the uh, on the edge so we know that the uh, moving from central cloud to edge is very helpful to uh, improve the end-to-end uh, -end business latency and also reduce the uh, uh, the bandwidth consumption between uh, cloud and edge and also uh, uh, very helpful to uh, improve the security and the privacy. While the uh, workload between cloud and the edge are very different. So in the central cloud, that's we are, that are actually we are very friendly. So uh, as AI, for example, more than, the, more than half uh, workload in the central cloud are training and also there are a few uh, inferencing and transcoding. While uh, in the edge cloud, it, uh, it becomes uh, a bit different because the, uh, the hash rates, uh, the computing power is less than the central cloud, and it's much more uh, closer to the uh, end user. So uh, it, it typically uh, consists more of uh, transcoding workload and uh, including a few uh, AI inferencing. And while uh, on the IoT age, it's actually very, very close to the uh, data source and the end user. So it's almost uh, running the uh, AI inferencing uh, workload there. So basically from the uh, cloud to the edge, uh, the closer to the edge, the lower latency. And while the uh, the underlying hardware are very uh, different, so in the central cloud, we know that we, we, we have a kind of a very standard uh, physical servers, but on the edge, they are very different, like CAN servers uh, and IoT gateways. So the uh, uh, the hardware the and the hash rate types are very different. So why trying to uh, build each computing platform with Kubernetes? We know that uh, the Kubernetes and the cloud native technology uh, have, are very uh, successful in the ecosystem, especially uh, it defined the uh, containerized uh, application model, which uh, make it really easy to uh, build once on everywhere. And also the uh, layering uh, container image mechanism makes it very uh, easy to optimize the, uh, the uh, whole image uh, size. And also Kubernetes provided very uh, a good application abstraction and already becomes the de facto standard in the uh, central cloud. If we build with the same technology, it's very easy to achieve the same experience across cloud and the edge. And also for Kubernetes itself, the architecture is very extensible, including the uh, API machinery, the CRD uh, mechanism, and also for Kubernetes itself, it's very easy to add customized uh, components, uh, customized controllers and or uh, operators. But there are also some challenges. So we know that uh, the age, one of the difference to the central cloud is that the uh, resources are quite limited, especially in the uh, IoT and the industry cases, the uh, the can servers can be down to, uh, for example, 512 uh, megabytes and maybe even less. But for a vanilla Kubernetes, almost the smaller deployment need one gigabyte, right? And, and even just the kubelet, it takes a lot of uh, memory. And also the uh, network between cloud and the edge are quite different. Some of the edge locates behind a firewall or inside a private network doesn't have a public IP. And also the uh, bandwidth are very limited. And also uh, the latency is uh, very different compared to the, uh, the, the network inside a, a data center. And if we want to uh, run the applications on the edge really really uh, in a good experience, we need to resolve the autonomy on the edge because the edge may be different, uh, may be dis disconnected and offline uh, often or for a, period, a long period of time. Uh, in that case, we should not uh, evict or migrate the applications because the uh, we just lost the connection, not lost the uh, physical servers and the instances there. And the uh, another big challenge is that uh, in the IoT and the industrial cases, there are a lot of uh, edge device uh, use different device protocols. So how to 
uh, simplify that for the application developer is also a very a big challenge. So QBH tried to uh, build on top of Kubernetes and extend the, uh, the uh, powerful uh, functionality from cloud, central cloud to achieve same experience and build a standard application management uh, 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 mechanism across uh, cloud and edge. Especially, Kubeage provides a seamless cloud and edge coordination by uh, re implementing a bi-directional uh, communication channel and make it able to uh, to communicate uh, even uh, going through a private subnet. So I want to also uh, highlight that uh, Kubeage starts with the uh, putting the uh, node, uh, Kubernetes node in, uh, onto the edge because that's much easier for uh, Low case, uh, low resource use cases, and also QBH introduced the uh, node level metadata persistency, uh, which reduced the, the uh, disaster recovery uh, time to make the uh, node get ready even uh, more faster. And also, we uh, did some uh, optimization to reduce the memory framework uh, footprint on the uh, on the uh, edge components. So itself takes around uh, seventy uh, megabytes, and also. Uh, uh, we support the OCI conformant uh, runtimes. For example, uh, we integrate with Cryo, the total memory consumption can be less than 100 megabytes. And also another thing is that for uh, IoT and the industrial internet, Kubeage provided a uh, extensible framework to simplify the uh, device, uh, spe uh, specialized uh, device protocol into the platform so the application uh, developers can uh, uh, focus more on developing their own applications. So this is a very uh, high level uh, view of the uh, QBH architecture. So on the top, let me, sorry. Uh, on the top, you can find out actually a, it's a vanilla, uh, still a vanilla Kubernetes cluster. And QBH just added a, a few uh, edge nodes. So to the Kubernetes master, uh, because we understand the uh, mechanism of Kubernetes work. So uh, it's actually uh, uh, treating the uh, edge node same as the uh, cloud nodes, but actually the uh, cloud core is uh, dealing with the shadow management of the a real world uh, edge nodes on the uh, edge. So the uh, in the uh, bi-directional communication uh, channel, we use WebSocket by default, and we also develop uh, develop the uh, quick uh, support as a alternative in uh, some uh, different cases, and also on the edge. Uh, uh, as I mentioned, that we uh, support the OC or, or the uh, OCI conformant container runtime, and also uh, we support the uh, CNI and the uh, the uh, CSI storage on the edge. And for the uh, pod to pod to pod communication, because the net network environment might be different in the uh, data center or in the cloud, so we introduced a uh, edge mesh layer to uh, resolve the all the uh, communication things. And for the uh, devices, so. Uh, so QBH today is uh, actually relying on MQTT uh, because MQTT is uh, a bit more uh, popular than the other uh, uh, industrial protocols. So basically uh, for the device developers, they can uh, develop a uh, protocol uh, converter to integrate with the uh, device using the uh, its uh, actual device protocol while converting the all the uh, message content to MQTT. So for the application developers, they uh, are uh, much, much more easier to develop their own applications. They just need to uh, deal with the communication through MQTT uh, instead of the uh, all the other uh, actual um, device protocol. So uh, for the cloud core here, uh, I just want to highlight that it, uh, it's actually dealing with the uh, shadow management for the uh, nodes on the edge and also the devices. So for the, to the Kubernetes cluster, all the, uh, the node object and also the application object uh, life cycles, uh, life cycle uh, actions are are reflected. So the, to the Kubernetes cl uh, master, uh, it just uh, treat all the things that in the same. So inside Cloud Core, uh, we have uh, edge controller. So this one is the shadow management for uh, actually the core APIs, including the, uh, the uh, uh, nodes, pods, config map, uh, etc., and also uh, for the uh, IoT 
and industry device management on the edge, we introduced a set of uh, device API, including the device model and the device instance. And we also added a, a device controller to reflect the uh, lifecycle updates. And uh, it's also basically the shadow management for the devices on the edge. Another thing is that we added a, a, a sync controller to do a reconcilement uh, between the cloud and the edge in uh, cases that any uh, inconsistency consistency de detected. The Cubage uh, CSI driver is actually a plugin to try to hook the uh, uh, the request like uh, storage provisioning uh, request to the edge. So uh, with Cubage CSI driver, it's very easy to uh, integrate third party uh, CSI uh, drivers on the edge. So basically you can install any uh, existing third party uh, CSI driver implementation to uh, Cubage. You don't need to uh, uh, worry about the, uh, the the communication between cloud and edge. You can just uh, install the whole uh, backend to the edge, and the cubage with the uh, CSI driver can deal with the, uh, everything. And the uh, admission webhook uh, uh, currently uh, is validating the extended API, like the device API, and also we are uh, developing a lot of uh, uh, best practice uh, enforcement uh, for for the uh, edge computing use cases. For example, if a node of, uh, become offline for a period of time, we may uh, not uh, evict the pod in the uh, default period of uh, time. So how Cubage uh, works, so uh, so this one, we are, uh, you might be familiar, it's actually a, a life cycle of an of a application uh, uh, running in a uh, vanilla Kubernetes cluster. So so actually what Cubage did uh, is uh, a, uh, equivalent replacement of a, a vanilla uh, uh, Kubernetes behavior. So in the vanilla Kubernetes, we know that uh, after a scheduler find a uh, proper node for a pod, it will update the uh, pod spec to fill up the uh, pod node name. And then the uh, Kubernetes will uh, get the notification and then spin up the uh, pod, uh, the containers on that node, right? So in Kubernetes, how to make it possible uh, to spin up a uh, container uh, on the edge. So actually, uh, after the scheduler uh, bound the pod to a node, uh, the cloud core will get the uh, notification of uh, the pods updated, and it will filter out all the pods that are uh, scheduled to the nodes on the edge and send the uh, information to all the uh, relevant nodes one by one. And then uh, the corresponding uh, uh, edge core on that node will get the uh, message so the meta manager will uh, will reflect that the uh, local uh, metadata persistency basically uh, persistent the uh, pod onto the node and then tell HD to uh, spin up the uh, the pod. So what in, uh, are inside the a uh, cloud uh, edge core? So so edge hub is actually a uh, equivalent implementation uh, comparing to the cloud hub. It's actually uh, uh, de dealing with the uh, uh, communication between cloud and edge, and also make it possible to talk across firewall, or uh, or even the edge is behind a uh, uh, even the edge is located inside a private network. So the meta manager will uh, do the uh, basically uh, provide the uh, node level metadata persistence functionality. HD is a uh, lightweight kubelet uh, implementation. So we basically uh, vendored the vanilla kubelet and uh, skip the sum of the. Uh, uh, packages that are not uh, quite relevant in the edge computing use cases. So the uh, device train is uh, dealing actually for the uh, uh, IoT and the industrial uh, internet cases. Uh, it's uh, syncing the device status between cloud, edge node, and the device. So the edge bus, uh, event bus is a MQTT to, uh, uh, to, 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 to uh, talk between uh, device screen and the, uh, the uh, device mapper actually. And also the edge, edge mesh, as mentioned uh, in the previous slides, it's uh, dealing with the part to part and also the service load balancing and also uh, the node level local uh, DNS uh, resolution, uh, resolution. So uh, for the community uh, release development, uh, we actually uh, release every uh, three months. The feature planning uh, starts in the beginning uh, of each uh, release lifecycle. And we uh, typically, uh, freeze our code uh, when it's uh, only uh, two weeks, weeks left to a uh, final release date to focus on uh, fixing bugs and uh, stabilize the uh, release. 
uh, another thing, especially to highlight here, is that we know that uh, on the edge, the a lot of uh, hardware are based on the uh, ARM architecture, right? So QBH community, uh, we support x86 and ARM architecture uh, as native architecture through whole release lifecycle. So for code, we know that uh, we just uh, run, uh, coding the IDE, and for building, we have the cross building, and for testing, we have uh, ARM architecture special uh, tests, and also we. In our CI, we have a uh, uh, full ARM-based CI tests and also the uh, x86 uh, verifications. So for uh, QBH community, uh, uh, a very big new, uh, ex uh, exciting news to uh, share here is that we moved to uh, CNCF incubation in uh, September this year. So currently we have uh, more than 3,000 starts and uh, 400, uh, 800 uh, folks on GitHub and also more than 500 contributors join the uh, uh, community. And we also have a lot of uh, organizations, organizations joining the uh, community development. And another thing I want to highlight here is that uh, we re we are currently moving to the uh, SIG-based uh, governance model. So we uh, enforce the uh, IoT device, SIG IoT uh, device. So this one is focusing on the uh, IoT and the industrial internet. Uh, relevant work to in, in improve QBH and also provide uh, better uh, user experience, de developer experience uh, for the IoT and the, in the industry internet. And another thing is the uh, MEC. Uh, so this one is to uh, basically leverage uh, QBH in the uh, 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 leveraging MEC platform uh, development with the uh, QBH inside. And another thing uh, on the discussion is about uh, is the uh, AI SIG. This SIG is trying to uh, provide better uh, uh, fundamental functionality for uh, the AI workloads uh, coordinating between cloud and edge, like uh, federated learning and also the, uh, the incremental uh, training, uh, uh, incremental uh, 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 inferencing. So uh, so here is a, a short list of the uh, organizations uh, inside uh, contributing in the community. So we can find that uh, we have the uh, IoT and uh, hardware uh, organizations, including ARM, Samsung, and also we uh, have a bunch of uh, uh, telecos and also the uh, uh, IT service providers and also the cloud providers. And also uh, some of the uh, academics are also doing uh, research around uh, QBH. So for the use cases, uh, we currently have more than uh, 20 uh, adopters. And here are uh, some uh, of the uh, production of adoption, including uh, the China Highway uh, ETC system, and also uh, RISCOM, is, uh, they use the QBH in their uh, factory to improve the uh, production line safety. And also uh, Xinhai IoT, they build with uh, QBH to, uh, 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 they developed a smart campus uh, uh, solution with QBH. So, uh, so uh, just a summer brief about the uh, MEC, MEC special interest group. So this one is actually uh, focusing on the uh, uh, reference architecture, uh, le leveraging the MEC with QBH. And also if any uh, enhancement uh, discovered, they will also uh, uh, focus on a joint effort to, to develop in the community. So uh, a brief about the areas, areas of focus are uh, uh, MEC relevant services. So basically our uh, service discovery and communication between uh, cloud and edge, or between different edge network, and also like make, make the uh, services are, are able to work when the edge and the cloud are dis disconnected, and also the MEC relevant uh, networking. So basically, this one is trying to expose more uh, telco uh, uh, capabilities to the uh, container network or to the uh, to the uh, service level. So uh, make the applications uh, able to uh, benefit more from the underlying network information, locations, and uh, also the security functionalities, etc., and also for the uh, MEC infrastructure. So this one is actually basically trying to support uh, various hardware acceleration, and also uh, the uh, multi MEC and the multi Kubernetes cluster management, and also also uh, to support uh, various kind of workload on the edge. So like uh, for example the uh, UPF. So uh, this thing will not uh, directly develop the uh, the user plan uh, function functionality which is actually a part of more uh, MEC uh, business uh, thing, but it will we will try to uh, 
improve uh, QBH to make it a, a better uh, underlying platform that uh, support uh, that leverage the MEC workloads and the business. So if you uh, would like to know more about it, please uh, visit the uh, underlying uh, link uh, to uh, go through the SIG transfer. And also, also we have a, uh, a dedicated uh, Slack channel uh, for this SIG. So one of the uh, uh, recent work uh, the MEC SIG is working on is that the uh, uh, reference architecture uh, building MEC platform on top of uh, Kubernetes and QBH. So uh, the uh, uh, so actually uh, we uh, are uh, borrowing a lot of uh, uh, concepts already defined by uh, the uh, GSMA operator platform. So for example, the uh, northbound interface and also the uh, the uh, user network uh, interface uh, and also the east west uh, uh, east west uh, uh, broadcasting uh, 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 east west bound interface and also the south south bound interface. So basically, it's it's defining how the uh, the uh, uh, services and the uh, components to uh, how they uh, communicate with the other part. So the uh, blue boxes are uh, uh, components that will be uh, provided by QBH. So actually, you will find out there are uh, some of the uh, boxes uh, new to the QBH architecture. So QBH uh, would basically uh, focus on uh, the following features, like, for example, the uh, cross-edge cloud uh, service discovery and also the nearby access. That basically means the uh, uh, make it possible for the application to know the uh, network location of it itself and uh, better serve the uh, the end user terminals. So the uh, uh, so the uh, end user terminal uh, they can get access to the uh, to a nearby uh, application and also the uh, when uh, any uh, cross application cross uh, container communication uh, happens, uh, it will try to deal with the network locality to uh, save the uh, uh, to save the uh, global network. Uh, bandwidth and also uh, the SRM based on uh, 5G network events and uh, and the and the uh, edge uh, service discovery. It will implement the uh, dynamic resource scheduling, elastic uh, uh, scaling, and the failover uh, sort of uh, uh, capabilities. And also the edge mesh will uh, cover uh, from L3 to L7. Uh, Cross edge and the edge cloud network streaming and also micro microservice governance, uh, uh, traffic governance, and also the uh, northbound interface because that's uh, that's uh, actually affect affecting the uh, the uh, developer experience and also the application uh, uh, communication mechanism. This way, this one is still uh, uh, working in progress, and we are doing a lot of a uh, lot of. Uh, Cross community discussion with the other organizations and other other uh, open source projects. If you are interested in a, um, in this, please uh, join the uh, MEC Slack to, uh, uh, to 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 join the discussion. So uh, the C device IoT is uh, responsible to uh, simplify and develop and maintain the uh, extensible uh, device protocol framework, and also. Uh, in the QBH community, we will uh, provide some of the uh, uh, the device protocol converter implementations, and also uh, make it uh, make it very easy for the other developers to develop their own device protocol uh, converters to integrate to uh, QBH. So uh, some of the uh, items here are, are uh, the common API abstraction, basically the device model and the device instance uh, APIs, and also the uh, the uh, device controller, device train, device mapper framework. That's uh, we need to keep improving the uh, extensibility, make it much more easier for the uh, LT cases. So the first thing we want to uh, integrate more, uh, integrate more and more uh, device protocols. Second thing we want to uh, integrate more, uh, integrate more uh, functionalities like uh, uh, data pipeline, data work, uh, workflow on the edge to. Uh, to make user able to specify some of the hardware filter, software filter to reduce uh, or convert uh, from raw data to meaningful data, and then send forward to the uh, business applications. And another thing is about the uh, data management. So we know that uh, the uh, devices are, are producing a lot of, uh, especially the uh, time serial uh, data. So uh, even it's very expensive to 
to send all of them to the uh, central cloud, we can persist them uh, on the uh, edge. And also for the mapper development, so uh, the SIG will try to simplify uh, and improve the uh, mapper design and provide reference implementation, SDK or code uh, skeleton. And last, the SIG is also, uh, will also uh, work on a lot of cross-community cooperation, try to integrate with other IoT projects and also uh, verify uh, interoper uh, interoperability and the compatibility uh, with the uh, the other projects and the devices, etc. Uh, this thing we also have a uh, dedicated uh, Slack channel on Slack. So uh, a few uh, some of the uh, recent uh, work done by uh, device IoTC are uh, the uh, improvements of device API. So uh, we basically simplify the uh, uh, the definition of uh, adding a uh, specific uh, customized uh, industrial protocol and also added new fields uh, collect life cycle uh, collect life cycle uh, collect the cycle and the report cycle for uh, uh, different uh, property visitors so in some cases the the uh, data the property collection uh, period and the property report period might be different and also uh, we introduced the data section to to uh, help users define what kind of data they want to persist on the uh, on the edge and uh, also integrate with some uh, data uh, processing workflow. So the uh, full proposal can be found with the uh, underlying link. And also another thing is that we uh, we are recently uh, simplifying the uh, mapper design reference. We uh, in the in the QBH one five release. We also refactored, uh, refactored the, the uh, Modbus mapper uh, implementation to uh, reflect the uh, the new design reference. Some of the uh, other uh, updates are uh, setup and uh, maintainability. Uh, maintainability. So uh, in uh, the uh, new releases this year, we uh, introduced the component config. It's actually uh, the same concept of to uh, Kubernetes uh, component config. So basically, we we uh, we added the Kubernetes style API to to simplify the uh, component configuration, and also added the uh, two commands to generate uh, config with, with default values. And for the node uh, node step up, we basically deal with the uh, the automation of the uh, registration and the TLS enforcement, and also the certificate rotation. And for the installer, the KDME, we uh, added support with uh, CentOS. Raspbian and also uh, Debian, and uh, uh, this year we added the uh, HA support uh, of CloudCore. It's uh, active standby uh, mode, but actually it can serve one CloudCore active CloudCore instance can support uh, one thousand uh, edge nodes. So uh, the community are currently are uh, under design and discussion to design the uh, scale up model for the CloudCore, and also we improved the. Uh, the message delivery uh, reliability between cloud and edge. So basically, uh, introduce a application layer uh, uh, act-based uh, uh, verification to make sure uh, the uh, there's no uh, message lost when uh, communicating between uh, cloud and edge. So uh, runtime and observability updates. Uh, we this year we uh, finished the uh, we actually supported more almost all the uh, the mainframe OCI conformant con runtime. Uh, including uh, Cryo, Kata containers, joining uh, Docker and uh, Kubernetes, we supported last year. And uh, both x86 and ARM architecture, uh, including ARM v, uh, v7 and ARM, ARM v8, are verified. And for the observability, uh, uh, we added support to uh, use kubectl logs to fetch logs from uh, pods on the edge, and also added support to uh, to use metric server to collect the metrics uh, metrics from nodes. In the uh, both in the cloud and the, uh, and on the edge, and also in one point five we added support of uh, uh, using Kubernetes EXEC to uh, access a pod on the edge uh, from the uh, from the cloud uh, from the API server in the cloud. So that's very uh, useful for the uh, application developers to to uh, debug their uh, applications on the old uh, on the edge while uh, uh, not going to the uh, to the actual uh, place of the uh, server there. So for the use case, I will just uh, uh, share one the largest. So in the China highway, uh, the previous uh, tolling mechanism is actually by uh, manual. The uh, efficiency is very low, and the uh, operating uh, operation expense are very high. And also, uh, 
uh, sometimes there there are some uh, toll evasion happens. So uh, in the new uh, uh, digital uh, transformation uh, progress, uh, QBH uh, together with Kubernetes helped uh, uh, the whole uh, cluster deployment. So uh, on the edge, there are uh, ARM can servers and also some of the uh, uh, x86 uh, industry PC. So uh, currently, the applications running on the edge nodes are uh, toll count and the car, car and plate uh, recognition uh, applications. So uh, the devices on the edge are actually uh, some of the uh, cameras and also the, uh, the, the gates. So in the end, the benefits uh, are uh, improved the uh, traffic efficiency with uh, 10 times more. So for the cars going through the uh, toll, uh, toll station, it's uh, down from uh, optimized down from 15 seconds to 10, and also the uh, truck time consumption of truck also improved a lot. The uh, highlights here are uh, they achieved a very uh, low end-to-end -end, uh, latency because it's very distributed system all over the uh, uh, toll stations uh, 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 in different cities of China. It's very uh, highly distributed. So the the whole system currently there are. Uh, 100,000 edge nodes and around 1 million applications. So with Kubernetes and QBH, uh, the, uh, the operating uh, team, they are uh, benefiting from the unified management experience and can upgrade or uh, scale out the applications on the edge in a very uh, easy way. And also on top of the uh, infrastructure, we mapped it, uh, added the support uh, in the application layer to uh, map the uh, hierarchy management to the different departments of the uh, traffic tolling and the traffic management. So for future plan, uh, technical things, we will uh, keep working on providing uh, cross subnet communication uh, support, especially for the applications running on the edge. And also uh, we will uh, uh, support the uh, edge and the cloud communication integration, uh, integrating with existing CNI and Envoy to uh to serve better the uh microservices and for the uh devices we will, we will add more uh, uh we will keep improve the uh framework extensibility and also add more uh, device uh protocol uh, integrations and uh, we will also uh, provide the uh decentralized security for applications on the edge so they can uh do the authentication and authorization even is connected to disconnected to the central cloud and also, uh, we are working on uh, the community is working on to uh, provide the uh, framework for uh, online framework to serve the uh, edge and the cloud AI coordination. So from the community wide, we will uh, try to uh, uh, provide better uh, contributor experience and also uh, host more uh, contributor events and also more cross community uh, collaboration. All right, uh, these are a few uh, useful community resources. So we have a website and the, the uh, most of the uh, work actually are done on GitHub and Slack. Slack. So uh, if you have any uh, questions, uh, we welcome you to uh, open an issue on the uh, GitHub or just uh, send message in the Slack channel. We also have the uh, the uh, MEC and the device IoTC channel link here. If you are interested in the, uh, the works they are working on, please feel free to join. And we currently are uh, uh, hosting the community meeting every week, alternate uh, between uh, Europe friendly time and the Pacific friendly time. Uh, you can uh, check out with the de uh, check out the details with the uh, meeting calendar. And also, we are recently working on the community uh, documentation to support uh, multiple uh, uh, releases and also multiple languages. If you are uh, interested in uh, improving the document, please feel free to join. All right, uh, that's all about the uh, uh, presentation. So if you have any questions, please feel free to ask in the uh, uh, Zoom meeting or uh, join the QBH community to ask uh, questions there. Thank you.